important to you and think about what is what the future hold. Um, you know, because and it's, it's obviously I think my training, what we do is sensible. It, it seems to it, it works. It's been re researched and researched. So what we do now, these guys are ready. We're going to do a little mini, a little mini session of what we do in my in my workout. I've got three volunteers here. We're going to actually do a little mini warm up, a tiny warm up, and we're going to do some other bits and pieces. So, okay, guys, you stand behind me. I'll stand in front. So this is what we're probably doing in our session when we start. So we all start off, the old guys stand behind me. And what we do, first of all, we get them to stand on their toes like this. We start balancing. They usually do it in their bare feet. They stand on their toes, and they come down, and they go back up again. What we're doing here, we're, 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 we're trying to uh, improve our balance. At the same time, we're, we're trying to strengthen our feet. People forget about the feet. We've got to strengthen our feet, we strengthen our calves. And bit by bit, we come nice and slow. Nice and easy. If people got a problem with the balance, we can put one of these things here just to hold the balance and down. Then what we start doing is start marching. We're getting warmed up now. So again, what you can do here, if you feel you can do more, you can start dragging these a lot higher, which I can do that. These guys, and you choose, you can do that much, you do that much, you choose. You're getting warmed up, you're boiling all the joints up, the ankles and knees. We have to put the hand behind the head then, do this. Then we try to slow it down, we'll try and use these a bit higher. And we do that. Now you bring the arms up in the air, and by bringing the arms up in the air, you're starting to work the heart rate as well now. So when you put your arm right, your core's engaged, you really start to work hard now. You get out of breath, that's the idea of want to get out of breath, get a bit sweaty and get out of breath, and that's, that's how we start a walk. What we do next, is we do some little mini squats. So we get a little bit wider, and we stand out, we squat down, push our bum backwards, and we stand up nice and tall. When we do a squat, we try and drive our knees nice and wide, and then try and push through the heels, stand up. You can go as low as you can. When you do a squat, you try and, as if you go and sit back into a seat, and stand up. You're going to do a mini squat, if that's all you can do, that's fine as well. But bit by bit, you start getting bigger and bigger. Next thing we'll do, we'll do some reaching and bending, ADL, so we'll do some reaching over here. And we'll go all the way down here, try and look forward, and we're bending down, and we're going all the way up. So we're reaching up, we're bending down. It's all thing you do in life. Reach up for a shelf, you put something in the cupboard. That's all we do. And we change sides, we reach up here, and we go down, and we go up. That's what we do. Next thing we like to do is most people do exercise <coughs> this way. There are three planes of movement. There's forward and back, there's side and side, side to side, and there's rotational stuff. You must try exercise in all three planes because life is like that. Life is, is in three dimensions. You can do everything in three dimensions. You don't walk. If people just walk all the time, or walk in one plane, your body wants to be trained in three planes. So, what we do now, we might step to the side, bring our hand down, and then push up nice and tall and go to the side. Go down and push up as hard as you can. So, what we're doing now, we're working hard, we're bending. And we're pushing, bring the muscle here to push back to the middle, <coughs> down nice and tall. Go down again, and we do that the whole time, get a bit out of breath. This is hard work, says. That's the idea of exercise. It's supposed to be breathless. And then what we do then, we do a few, or we do one more little bit, we might do a little squat, we step back, and the foot, again, is what you call a lunge. We try and keep our feet as square as possible, not turn down. And what we do from there, we sit down a little bit, and we just reach out. What we're doing there, we're really working this big muscle here, massively. This big muscle, our core and our balance. And then eventually we put our arm down and we stand up and we do it on both sides. Then we might do something like this, we'll step again. This time we bring our hands up like this. And we'll do a little bit of rotation over the thing. A little bit of rotation and then back up again. And stand up. So we're working all three planes. What we do then, we do our main workout. So the main workout, what we do now, be four people here today, but we've got only got three. So what we're going to do here today, we're going to have. Um, you're going to do the one legged squat, just not that, just bend your down. You're going to go on there, and you're going to step up. You're going to put your left leg in here. So, so we do a circuit. So we have we have we have four exercises. We do four times. I have a little device in my belt. 
with a time device. It says 35 seconds or whatever I program it to be. Then there's a break of say 15 seconds to move around the little circuit. We do it four times. So just give that example. Well, I'll show one in a minute. Yeah, just do that. So off you go. You just, so you the point you're doing some balance work here, just balancing her leg. She's going down a little bit. She's really working her leg. She's going to try not to touch that blue thing as much as you can. <laughs> just there if she needs to. And Paul, you're doing some standing sits. And Trevor's doing some, some just stand on a, on a step. All stop a minute. Who's got the card that says progressive overload? Read that out, please. Progressive overload is the gradual increase of stress placed upon the body during exercise training. This is the most important thing that you can do. This is our, our athletes train. This is our Olympians train. This is how you get fit. If you don't continually increase the overload, you're going nowhere. So people who say I go for a walk, I exercise, I go for a walk, I play golf. The body's amazing at keeping itself efficient. So you go for a walk, I see the same people walk my house every day, they do a two, three mile walk, and they're keeping health, which is perfectly fine. Health walking's fantastic. But their, their body, if, they, if you imagine the calories burn, when they first started doing it, they'll burn maybe 400 calories. A year later, they're burning 200 calories because their body's got used to doing it. It's adapting, your body is surviving the whole time. It keeps a, it keeps, it's a way of, of keeping you alive. It, it keeps, it's a very efficient, it's an amazing machine your body is. So the only thing you've got to kid it, you've got to stress it out. So what we do then, so what we can do here, we can give, we can give Paul, uh, Barbara a weight, which is quite a heavy weight, and now we do, we're, we're overloading it now. We can give Trevor some weights here. We could also change his rest time, we can make it less rest time, we can make it more work time, we can make him go faster, we can get points and weights here, she can go lower. So you've got the idea, you haven't got to do it, but this is what we do. Every week we make a note. And these guys are, are trained now to, to try and work hard. They know they've got to work hard. We only train for about 14 minutes. We, by the time we rest period in there, you know, and the actual training bit is very, very short, but it's incredibly effective. Now, so you haven't got to do years and you can put it down, guys. You can sit down now, guys. Put your hand for The young guy did that years ago. You, you see, he'd be on the gym for hours on the treadmill. Hours on the cross trainer. Cardio is the worst thing you can do. Cardio is dead. We, we get cardio by doing this. If I did this, if I did this thing 15 times, I was going to bring a heart monitor and show you how my heart got. If I did this now for about 15 times, my heart is going to start racing. And then you can see my voice. We're going to be out of breath quite soon. This is quite, I can through quite a lot of this to get me going. But if I kept doing this, eventually, I wish this is not overloading me that much. I would need probably some double to overload me. I have a yellow one, which is, this is 8 kilos. I do one 16 kilos. So I'm just starting to get breathless now. This is what you've got to do. This is what you call training. I'm getting breathless now. So how many have done? I like starting to wake a little bit. I didn't sleep very well last night, I was thinking about the talk all night. I didn't sleep very well, so I'm pretty quiet today. But I'm doing a few more, getting the idea of what we're trying to do. My legs are getting quite tired now, but how many have done? I'm not going to do it anymore. So, that is training. So, that's what you got to do. But obviously, I would control that and make sure people don't overexert themselves because. You can't get fit in one day, it's like a, what's the rush? We're not trying to train for Olympic Games. We try to get a bit of a sweet time. <laughs> what's happening now, my heart is beating like mad. And what it's doing is, I'm gasping air, because the reason I'm gasping air is my muscles give my oxygen. I think I'm still working, so I'm, I'm, I'm gasping air, trying to deliver oxygen to my, my muscles. And the stronger the heartbeat, what he calls cardio output, cardiac output. And basically, I would think I've got the strongest heart in from a trainer. So what's happening in my heart is every beat is delivering 
a lot more blood than your guys to my body. So I'm recovering now. So that's what happens. My, my beat is a lot bigger than yours, it's a bigger pump. So you must work your heart rate, and that's what you must do. If you are going to walk, it's fine. But occasionally find a lamppost about 50 yards ahead and walk to it as fast as you can. Get out of breath. If you find a hill, find a hill. Find some steps, find some steps. You must get out of breath. You must, otherwise you'll never get fitter, you never get stronger. So, what's my note? So, so we've done how we train. <coughs> we've done everything. Oops, a daisy. So, I'm going to finish it. I've got a couple of things to say before I finish. I'm going to finish in notes. Why do we train? I'm going to bring you a list of 50 reasons why you, why you train. I thought I'm down very well. So I've just got a brief ones here. You'll sleep better. You'll eat better. You'll have more energy. You'll have more confidence. You'll have less pain. You get more done. You're more connected to people. You're just as whole lost. You just list of stuff. Your digestion better. Blood pressure comes down. Everything happens when you train properly. When you do it properly, like an athlete, because you're training like an athlete trains. How they train Olympians, this is what that's what they do. They're just, they're just basically progressive overload, they come back and do a bit more hard reach day, they're stressing their body out. But the key thing is you recover properly. So that's where nutrition comes in. You must have protein, you must eat lots of protein. Because obviously after, after a session like that, the muscles have all been beaten up, and you're repairing the protein is like steaks and porks and salmons and nuts and hummus, all this sort of stuff is, you know, this is, this is the key to and getting good sleep and not be stressed. These are all the things that you guys should be doing now, because obviously you've got time to do it, you're in your third age. And unfortunately, this is the last chance really. This is it. Don't do it now. <laughs> that would be funny. So this is what it's all about. Really. So um, um, I'm just going to finish off by saying uh, a couple of things. One, motivation. Motivation, people say, oh, I'm not motivated to exercise. You haven't got to motivate to exercise. You've got to turn up. It's like, it's like you clean your teeth every day. You get a shower every day. It's just a habit you do. Next time, it just should be a habit. You haven't got to motivate, just show up. Just drag yourself to the, the, the centre and train. And, and when you feel, when you come out, you feel ten times better. But forget about motivation. Just, just, just turn up. So, um, and next thing is, is we're always responsible, responsible for our own health. We go to the GPs and we ask for a tablet to make ourselves better. Um, you know, I, I understand there's genes out there and things happen, but 75%, sadly, 75% of, of, of all these things, the heart, osteoporosis, hypertension, da -da 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 -da, <coughs> we all change if you had a better lifestyle, really. So I think we should be responsible for our own health, to keep ourselves fit and strong, and a big word, independent. Which means eating well, sleeping well, exercising often. And the biggest thing is, as the years go on, not to be a burden to our family or the state because we've got a chance now to do this sort of thing now. We've got loads of years ahead of us. Loads of years. And I think it's really important that you really think about it you know, in a big way. And you know, look at the Marcel Nelson Mandela story. He got put into prison for 27 years. He came out a 70 year old man. He came out fit and strong because every day he did this sort of stuff. And he's late his last year for the best years of his life when he became president of South Africa. And he was a world statesman. And, you know, obviously he, he couldn't do that without being fit and strong. He wouldn't be able to do what he did without doing this sort of stuff every day in that little small cell. He lived in a cell about as big as this. He was abused in every way possible, but he still came out fit and strong. So, um, so I'm going to give that. If you can, I'm going to give out I'm going to give some feedback forms here. Just think of what it was about the talk. And if you're interested in any more talks I might give in the future, or if you're interested in reserving a place on the next course. I have got, I've only got 10 places available. Obviously, I'm going to get working in a small gym. If I feel that's, that the, the business is going to go places, I'm going to get a bigger gym. I've got something fairly ambitious, but I think this is a a future for me in business and trade with all the people. There's a massive business out there, huge. You know, like I said, in 20 years' time, there'll be 8 million 85 year olds. So, um, um, but I suppose at the end of it, 
I don't know if any questions. Um, you want to ask me? Um, How old do you feel now? Sorry? <laughs> About 40, I think. Probably 60. I feel very young. I'm just, you know, I ski. I ride a bike. I go do 100 mile bike tomorrow. I ride a bike 100 miles. Um, you know, I can. There's nothing I can't do. I can, I can beat most youngsters at most things. I play basketball. I can. You know, I still play golf. You know, I want to. I want to get through this. The trouble is down here. He's, he's 70 years of age. He's been. He can. He's a fit lad. So, uh, can I just say something? I was not asking to say anything, honestly. But I was fit in my younger days, and then just about a year ago, I put my gas on the floor, and I thought. I can't do what I used to do, and I can again now, which to me has been a great benefit. And uh, <coughs> it's not hard. Sometimes I go, I think I can't bother to go. And friends of mine who started with Tony did go, and they said, oh, I can do that at home. But when I see them now, they're not doing it at home anymore. They give up. They don't do it. You need that. Tony said, you, need, you don't need motivation. Just turn up at his class and he'll motivate you. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? How many sessions a week does, do these people do typically? Um, Bob does two, Trevor does two, uh, Paul does one. We recommend two races. Like I said, if you want to do two, six, six weeks twice, you'll be amazed at the difference. Really. It just is, it's just, obviously, the exercise we do there, we change all these, there are hundreds of exercises we can do. And we don't forget to say we do use bands quite a lot. <coughs> so, just come over here, Trevor. So, uh, Give you a few of it there. And I'll just do a chest pull type thing. So, yeah, so what we're going to do, we have a lot of fixing points in my gym. So we've got to fix the wall. We do a lot of exercises. In fact, I don't want to look at it. So what we're trying to do, we try and get them to, to really work on their posture. So we get them doing this with their thing. And what we're doing there, we're working on the back muscle, the postural muscles. And we do everything standing up. So on my core's working here as well. This is a really easy band. If it's too hard, go a bit closer. If it's too easy, go a bit further away. And then we're doing that. And this is one of our one of our exercises we circuit. And we can do one, we can put a band up here as well, top, and put a band down here. So obviously when you're exercising, you've got to make sure the forces are hitting you at different points. One coming from here, that is a different set of muscles. This is from here, this is another set of muscles. This is from here, another set of muscles. So that's why at the moment I can only train five at a time. Because it's like it's like personal training. But in a group, most people get, that's why we try and keep the exercises the same for a while. They'll get used to the exercises and then we move on. Every six weeks we try and change it a little bit. We might leave some exercises in. But all these you can do at home. You know, they're very easy to do at home. Just, you know, everyone should do that every day. should use at least a power stand, 15 power stands. And get yourself out of breath. And see if you can time yourself 30 seconds down you can do. So and then see if you can, if you keep doing it, if you don't join my class, just keep doing it and see what happens. And, and just, like I say, don't be much just do it. <laughs> Any other question? Can I just say, I started going to tell me after I had a hip replacement and it made a massive, massive difference. I could walk without lifting. The lady who, uh, thanks to the, the lady who, uh, who did from 9 to 19, she had a walking stick. And she lost her walking stick for a while. She hadn't been here for a while. She'd been back in a walking stick. But my aim was to get that walking stick off her again. <laughs> I think you just get a habit with the stick. It's, it's, it's just confidence with the stick. It's just a fear thing. You know, you don't want to fall because falling is not good. Mm -hmm. Falling is not good. Like I said, we're going to fall, fall, fall because, like I said, there's an epidemic moment of people getting fractures, and it's, it's not a good, not a good place to be. So, um, but um, if I could ask you to fill these four, maybe we can give them out now. Can you have a look? Give us that. Please. Let's give them. Just, just hand them around if you could, and uh, I'm not sure I've got enough there, but well, hey, just, just ask a question, of, there's two questions, one question, did you find the talk informative, yes, no, whatever, and would you be interested in more talks, and thirdly, would you be interested in booking a place on a on one of my courses, and if, if I get a lot of inquiries, and I've got to rethink my old strategy, if I get a few, that's fine, but uh, so if you stay around, I'm going to be back again, I'll be here for another 20 minutes, I'll be wandering around, have a cup of tea. Yes? Oh, it's used to it. It's in my house. I've got a, a, a house. I've got a nice big drive. It's a, you can park easily. It'd be great if you did come down with your friends.